we've been kind of going through, y'all, and I'm going to kind of mention it again just to kind of um, have everybody on one accord and not lose our text and what we're dealing with because we kind of branched off and, and we diving into prayer right now. But um, we started a series, y'all, you know what I'm saying, months back, man, just going deep. The Lord had pricked my heart and gave me a word for such a time for today. And you know what I'm saying? And it was a prophecy from Joel because Joel prophesied in the Old Testament time, but he was prophesying about these New Testament days, about these days that we live in. It. You know what I'm saying? So it's so important, this prophecy from Joel. Though he was a minor prophet, y'all, he had a message that was major. <laughs> that was major, you know, and we seen it taking place even as we speak before us. And it's things that never happened yet, but we going to see it, huh, Shane? With our own eyes, y'all. With our own eyes. So we dived into Joel chapter 2, verse 17, and uh through 18, and I'm not going to read the text, but just to give you an outline on where we at, because we coming out of 1 Timothy, y'all, so, um, but we, we started in Joel chapter 2, verse 17 through 18, and we had seven points, y'all, just giving you a road map to know where we at, you know what I'm saying, but where we came from and where we going, <laughs> by the grace of the Most High. But we started with our first point was an understanding of the day of the Lord. And, man, we went deep just breaking it down. And we got a few, I um, think we got a video or two about it, you know. But um, we just broke down and got an understanding of the day of the Lord because that's what Joel was talking about. In chapter 1, he was talking about this phrase called the day of the Lord. Chapter 2, he mentioned the same phrase, y'all, the day of the Lord. And in chapter 3, he mentioned the same phrase, the day of the Lord. So we just went in on that. And um, then we moved to let the priests. And we went deep into letting the priests that Joel was calling for the priests, y'all. He calling for the priests. He's in the Old Testament time. And, it's, and he's speaking of New Testament days. He's speaking of the last days <laughs> when the Levitical priesthood would be done away with. You know what I'm saying? When the priesthood after Aaron would be done away with. But yet at the same time, Joel still calls and it's God who spoke through Joel and said, let the priest. He made a clarion call unto the priest of the Most High. And we just went deep in and about that, man, and I'm um, talking about how the, the priestly office been scarred, how it been damaged, how it been broken down, how it been made a shame, y'all. And we said it through this, this religion that Satan had took over, you know what I'm saying, who, 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 who he had, <laughs> going back to Revelation because he staggered, and we went deep on that. I ain't got time to go back into it, y'all, but um, this Roman Catholic church, this empire, you know what I'm saying? And we done seen it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a, I, I was born in it, you know what I'm saying? I was a, a born, a, a, a hard, a, come from a family of Catholics, you know what I'm saying? But um, God moving, we'll probably dive into some of that too, just give you a little historical fact, you know, of God moving on Martin Luther to start the Reformation, you know what I'm saying? And bring the people back to the scriptures, back to God. Because Satan had strong arm, y'all. He had took the cloak of Peter. But God, in these days that we're living in, so such amazing times, he's returning the cloak of Peter back. You see, God allowed it because it went to the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? It was a dispensation to the Gentiles, who is Paul was the apostle of. And Peter was the apostle of the Hebrews. But now in these days that we're living in, it is coming right back around, y'all, because he want to flip the world upside down again. <laughs> you see, it was Hebrew Christians who he used, y'all, to bring this gospel to the Gentiles. Every single one of them was Hebrew Christians, and they flipped the world upside down, y'all, upside down. 
So we went deep into letting the priest, man, and, and just looking at that call. We said that it was a call to the man of God, to the man of God, bringing the man of God back in his original office. Because the priest, y'all, stands in the gap for the people. He goes to God on the behalf of the people. But we said that everybody caught up and want to be prophets. Mm. Everybody caught up and want to be kings, y'all. But nobody want to be priests. <laughs> and Jesus said he shed his blood in the book of Revelation to make us kings and priests. And it's a particular office that God had cut out for the man. And we went in and we said, that's why Paul said that men all, always, all over should do what? Lift their hands in prayer. Because God not going to move sometime. In a lot of churches, that's been our, our headache for a long time. It's more women and we, we not shine the women from praying, but would a priest of the household stand up? Would a priest of the Most High stand up? Would a men stand up? And we went into that around Father's Day because it was a rhema word for the man of God to take his rightful place, yo. To take his rightful place. Because sometimes God will not move until the man of God pray. We seen that with Isaac. His wife prayed. Rebecca prayed for child. She was barren. But the Bible said God heard his prayer and move for her, yo, and move for her. And that's what we need in our churches again. That's what we need in this movement. We need the men of God to stand up, yo, to stand up. And then we talked about weeping between the porch and the altar. And we just went deep. We went deep because the priest, and we gave her illustration, pictures, and everything about how the priest would walk up and down between the porch and the altar, sprinkling the blood, doing sacrifices, making incense offerings, yo. And God commanded them. He said, weep between the porch and the altar. And we told you that it was all about prayer. Even going back to David in the scriptures, in the Psalms, David being wise, being way ahead of most kings in his day, and even all the kings, I would say, behind him. You know what I'm saying? David likened his prayer. He, he, he correlated his prayer to, what, to all of the office in the service that the priest did between the porch and the altar, y'all. David said, let my prayer be unto you, Lord, like the incense offering. He said, let my prayer be unto you like the offering of the sacrifice, y'all. That's how important your prayer is. That's how important your prayer is, is valuable in the eyes of God. And Jesus correlated it came sweet in the New Testament, giving a parable. He said, let men faint not, but do what? But pray always. And Jesus, we know he made the greatest correlation because he knew every single office and situation and thing that the priest did in the house of God. Yo. They would have service both, both in the morning and evening time. And the priest was doing all these different services. Even breaking down the word, we talked about the teaching priests. <laughs> and God is bringing that back. The teaching priests. He going to restore this priesthood, this name, this, this office that the devil tried to score, yo. Ooh, he going to restore it. <laughs> he going to restore it. But Jesus making the greatest correlation, letting us know what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? He said, let my house be called what? A house of prayer, yo. A house of prayer. A house of prayer. You know what I'm saying? And that's where we at, man. We was dealing with, 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 with weeping between the porch and the altar. And that led us into this scripture that we're going to dive into. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, y'all. And we just going to go into prayer. And we've been talking about, you know, and I'm going to read this text. We've been talking about um, this, 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 this diving into this 
this scripture written by the apostle Paul, yo. And to give you our three things that we was talking about, and that's what we're going to continue to talk about. Our first thing we was talking about, and we're going to kind of get back into that, it was spiritual warfare fighting the good fight of faith. Spiritual warfare. You know what I'm saying, Tedrick? That's what's going on right now in the earth. Spiritual warfare. Fighting the good fight of faith. And that's the scripture that came today across my, uh, my table, man. You know what I'm saying? Just, just in my personal reading, just, just having um, the scripture. And this is what Paul said, and I'm going to read it, and we're going to get back into it. But in 2 Timothy 4, 7, look what, and um, I ain't give it to you sound boot, but um, look, what he, look what Paul said. Look what Paul said, and this, I, I, I sent it to a group um, that I, that I kind of have with the brothers, you know what I'm saying, and we're going to kind of implement some of that even in Dallas, man, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of men, you know what I'm saying, and I sent it in the scripture, it says, Paul said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and in other translations, he said, I have been faithful. I have been faithful, y'all. Fighting this good fight of faith. And a lot of Christians don't know, but newsflash, you are in a war, whether you know it or not. It's a war going on, a war in the heavenness. And God wants you prepared. He wants you prepared. In the direction we going, he wants you prepared, not just for yourself, but prepared for your children. Not just for your children, but for your whole household. He want us prepared for our church, y'all. He want us to be prepared for this movement in this direction that God is taking us. This revelation of raising up his original people was brought about by the Holy Spirit himself. Jesus Christ himself, y'all. He the one spoke that. I know them that say they are Jews, but are not, but do lie. That never came from man, yo. That came from the God man. <laughs> and it was a revelation for the church, saints. It wasn't for all them that don't know God. No. Because God always want every single thing balanced. It was a revelation for the church to cut it straight. To cut it straight. Because we're going to have all races of men in heaven. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? For God had made all races of men in the book of Acts with one blood, yo. You know what I'm saying? And we going to be a major part in the church. We the, we the original olive branch of the church. And the rest of the church going to grab hold to our cloak and say, take us to your God. Because God going to move in us in a way that he never moved before. You going to see your people loving God in a way that they never loved God before. I'm not telling you something that I see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he going to do it. He going to do it. You got to remember the Gentiles wouldn't always like that. And when we say Gentiles, all we talking about every other race who are not Hebrew. Oh, God. We got the original Hebrews, and I done taught about it before, pastor done taught about it. You can go and get a revelation and an understanding of it. You know what I'm saying? We believe that the Negroes are the, are the, are the, are the southern tribe of Judah, but it's also the northern tribe, which is the ten tribes, which include the Latino people, which include the Mexicans, which include yo, a lot of other indigenous people, y'all. Who are his and been his. <laughs> and he's revealing it, y'all. And a prophet just came to this house last week, Thursday, y'all, with two sticks. I'm going to talk about it, huh, Shane? I'm going to talk about it because there's a scripture in the Bible, I think it's in, in Zechariah or, or um, Ezekiel. Or oh, matter of fact, Isaiah. But just don't miss the, the trees for the forest, how they say. But, but it's a scripture that God said he promised. He said, I'm going to take the two sticks, Ephraim and Judah. Oh, God. The southern tribe and the ten lost tribes. 
Oh, God. And he said, I'm going to make them one stick. <laughs> I'm going to bring them together, and they're going to be unified. You can imagine the world. Well, you got Judah, you got the Hebrews, you got, you got the Negroes in one accord with Mexicans and Latinos. And you know what I'm saying? In one accord because we all one people. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Not to do evil, but to do right. <laughs> because when the wicked rule, the people mourn. But when the righteous rule, the people rejoice, y'all. They rejoice. They rejoice. So we're going to be talking about this spiritual warfare, fighting the good fight of faith for his glory, for his glory. We're going to pick up where we left off, y'all. You know, y'all kind of pull some stuff out of me by the grace of the most high. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to tend, stay on track. Love, keep me with the time for his glory, for his glory. So I'm going to read the text in 1 Timothy. We're going into prayer. And um, we ain't, um, I'm going to iterate it. Um, we're going to have this meeting on the 12th, y'all. So y'all plug in if y'all want to be a part of this. And this is vain. We're making the meeting brawl because we want to share our heart with y'all. I'm a type of leader where I put everything on the table of what God given me and the direction we go. You know what I'm saying? And it's not, it's not a, it's not a, who a one man show, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? You multiply when it's, who, when it's unity. When it's a multiple of people that God is using to bring forth his will in the earth, y'all. And that's what God going to do in this ministry. <laughs> That's what God going to do in this ministry. Y'all going to be used in a way like y'all never thought y'all would be used. Some of y'all going to be preaching and teaching and you never thought it. Ooh, I'm telling you, he going to use you in a way like you never would think. And it's going to be all for his glory, y'all. All for his glory as he take us up. But the scripture said, therefore, I exalt first of all that supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And that men is mankind, y'all. So, Father, we thank you for your text for the night. We ask that you breathe on it. We ask that you take our two fish and, and loaves, God, and you feed the multitude. God, give us wisdom as we go forward, God. For we don't want to fight against flesh and blood, God. Ooh, we want to deal rightly, God, in this spiritual warfare, God. For we know who our fight is against. So give us revelation. Give us wisdom, God. And bring unity, God, in this house. Ooh, we thank you for it. We receive it, God. Bring unity in your people, God. Open our eyes and let us stop fighting one another, God, and begin to deal with the enemy, Master, for your glory, God. You know how much we need it, Lord. You know how much we need it, Daddy. So do it, Most High, in Jesus' name. Excuse my passion, y'all. <laughs> in Jesus' name, man. But um, we started off, man, with this text, y'all, and... um. We started off by just talking about how um, this is going to bless us, y'all, as a ministry as we move forward in this direction of prayer. You know what I'm saying? And we talked about collective prayer because that's what we're going to do every Monday for an hour. Jesus asked his disciples, he said, can you watch with me for one hour? So we're going to bring prayer in this house, y'all, every Monday for an hour, for an hour. Just be seating the Lord, going through, and we're going to do it back in Lafayette. We call it the school of prayer. And everybody that come, you know what I'm saying, when I first went, that's where I learned how to pray. Because you don't have to pray when you come. Just being in the body, being connected, who it produces a power, y'all, a power that I can't even explain. You know what I'm saying? Just by being in there. 
And sooner or later, you're going to be stepping up, being led by the Spirit to pray as well. And it's going, and it's going to game you. It's going to give you nuggets on how to pray to your house in your own confinement because that's my heart. I want to see your household blessed. I want to see your children blessed. I want to see your people blessed and saved by your prayers, y'all. Because it's, 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 ooh, it's an office that's operated on the same level as kings. We think we need a bunch of money to move things. <laughs> you don't know how much you can move by calling on the most high. The most high. Just heard an awesome testimony of just prayer. Ooh, woman in bondage, woman in a hard place of not peace with God desires for us. But yet she prayed to the most high. And now she living the greatest life she ever lived. And I believe that God going to move even in a situation and bring the person that was causing trouble back into her life. And he going to bow to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, man. You're going to see it, sis. In Jesus' name. But it's going to bless your household. And that's what we want to do. We want to impact your life. We want our lives to be impacted, y'all. You know, as well as our, as our households. So, man, we just went in talking about this spiritual warfare, y'all. And we started off by looking at our text. And our text started off with saying, therefore. And anytime you run across a, a scripture that start off with therefore, or start off with a word like then. Or start off with a word like, like, like after this or after that. You know what I'm saying? You know, or before. You always want to go back and read maybe the scripture before or maybe even the whole chapter before so you could know why is it there for. That's what you want to do. And that's how you study. That's how you exegete the scripture and break it down right. Because you don't want no error. Now, we all know in part. We none perfect. So we not going to know it all. I don't care who you is. You know what I'm saying? But you want to cut it as straight as you can by your ability, by the spirit that's living in you. The Bible say be a workman. Study to show yourself approved. A workman, not ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we did. We had to go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. 18, 18 through 20. And I'm going to read the text and we're going to just flow into where we're going. I know I don't have too much time, love, but, you know, the Bible says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. And we talked about how Paul just went in just letting him know about the prophecies of the laying on hands by the elders that was spoken over, over Timothy's life. And you could see that in chapter 4, verse, verse uh, 14, y'all. But to continue, man, and Paul just reminds Timothy of that. And I'm going to keep going, but we got to this scripture where we want to be, y'all, because... It was all about what we talked about. Paul was reminding Timothy of the prophecies spoken over him, I have in my notes, with the laying on of hands to stir up the gift, the Holy Ghost on the inside of him, y'all. That's on the inside of him. In order to wage spiritual warfare against Satan in the kingdom of darkness. Against Satan in the kingdom of darkness. And we talked about it. We went in, man. We said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, y'all. That's what the scripture said. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other translations, it say heavenly places, Tedric. You know what I'm saying? And we just went in talking about that and we dealt, we dealt with the B part of the verse and we talked about how first off this scripture teaches us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And we all know that. 
We all know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But the big question that we went into and talked about, you know what I'm saying? We say, why does it always seem like it? <laughs> we know what your words say, God, but let's be real. We're not no babies. Let's be real. You know what I'm saying? Because God is real and life is real. Though your scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but why do it always seem and feel like it? Come on, let's be real. It seems and feel like it. Why, y'all? And that's the question we beg. And God gave me a little revelation and he showed me and he told me that, you know what I'm saying, the reason is, is because flesh and blood is intertwined within the warfare. <laughs> and the greatest description he gave me is like a person being intertwined in nets, y'all. In nets or being entangled in a rope, y'all. Now, the warfare is the net. The warfare is the rope, y'all. And we trying to deal with the warfare, trying to cut the rope, trying to cut the net, y'all. We got to do it without cutting the people. <laughs> and that's not an easy thing to do. And sometimes we use physical and natural means to deal with the net, to deal with the warfare. And we ain't doing nothing but hurting the people. Oh, God. And that's not our heart. We don't want to go back and forth with the people. We don't want to war with the people. But we like, God, you see what's going on. And the enemy uses what? People. He uses anybody. He don't never come straight up. He always comes sideways. He always come with a human being intertwined in his mess. <laughs> that he trying to bring into your life, Christian, that he trying to bring into your life. But I'm trying to give you the game and God give us the game through the scriptures. He said we wrestle not. <laughs> God in the name of Jesus. But how do we deal with it, Sister Tara? We talked about it. He gave us spiritual weapons. We trying to fight these things in the natural and we losing, Mr. Franklin. We taking L's. We falling out with the ones we love. You know what I'm saying? We dealing them with them in harsh ways, and we don't want to do that. We love them. Some of us, we would lay our lives down for them. You know what I'm saying? But we fighting wrong. We trying to use physical things to cut the net. We trying to use physical things to cut the rope. We use our tongues. Come on, we use all kind of different mechanisms, Mr. Franklin. Let's be real. And all we do is cut the person. And what the what the what the what does Satan do? What the devil do? Who is behind the warfare? All he does is laugh. All he does is laugh. I got another family, Lord. <laughs> Throwing it in our Lord's face because he's an accuser of brethren, and we're going to see it. He's an accuser of brethren. He always want to make this call. He always want to come and whisper. He's the chief whisperer, y'all, who separated chief friends, man. Ooh, ooh. You have your fighting with the one you love. You know what I'm saying? But our God, who our God then gave us weapons, weapons to be able to operate in this fashion. And that spiritual weapon, whether you know it or not, oh, and we're going to go deep into this weapon right quick. That spiritual weapon is prayer. <laughs> it's prayer. And I'm going to show you how I look at prayer. I'm going to show you how I look at prayer from a spiritual perspective. Because when I was in the streets, I took care of my family. I was ready to die for them. You know what I'm saying? Any means necessary. Well, for the man of God, you got to have that same heart when you're coming to Christ. Oh, God. You see, God don't want to remove who you are on the inside. He just want to remove the, the entanglement, the, the flesh. Oh, God, the things that's going to 
so easily beset you. Oh, God, but he made you how you are, Miss Tara. He made you. He want you to be you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. That's when he do his greatest work. He don't want you to be somebody else. He just want to clean it up. <laughs> he wants you to operate with wisdom and skills that the most high and gave you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, that you might do like Jesus and make an open spectacle of Satan and his dominions. Oh, God. The Bible said that God made an open spectacle of them when he laid his life down on the cross. Why? Because they had no idea what he was doing. They thought by killing him, they was hurting him, Miss Jasmine. But they don't understand that they was pushing him to his purpose. He said, I was sent to die for the sins of mankind. <laughs> if I don't die, they don't be saved. The Bible says if Satan would have knew that, he would have never crucified the Lord of glory, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got to operate with spiritual wisdom. Oh, God. We talked about it last time. We operate too much with the wisdom of men. Too much with the wisdom of men. We operate with counsel that don't come from here, but come from a man's heart. We got to deal. We got to let everything that we do be in agreement with this book, y'all. The disciples said it like this. They said, where could we go, Lord? You alone have the words of life. When I found out about this book, when I dived into this book, because the Catholic Church, you don't even have to bring your, your, book, your Bible to church. When I understand the Jews that was in there. When I understand the game that God was given, oh, God, can I talk in, in everyday vernacular so the youngsters could understand as well? God is giving game in here. God is showing you things. He said, he said, you open my word. He said, I'm going to show you marvelous things that you never knew about, about yourself, about others, about every single thing that's going on around you, oh, God, so you can operate the way he wants you to. So you could deal in love. <laughs> Even when they're trying to pull you out the spirit in the name of Jesus. You could still love them. Oh, come on, Shane. Even when they're trying to get you to come out and do things that you, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. You could submit it to the king, man. I'm not my own no more. more. I've been bought with a price. Oh, it's no more Bryce living. Who is the crucified Lord who live it in me, y'all? And I let him live. I let him do it. I let him have his way in my life, man. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about, y'all. When you can let him take 100% control and fight for you. Let him fight for you. The Bible said, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. God fights for his disciples, y'all. You get out the way, they're going to find themselves fighting with God. And he ain't never lost a battle. He ain't never lost a battle. He ain't never lost a battle. Let him fight for you. You stay on the wall doing what he, what he gave you to do. Let him fight for you. For his glory, man. For his glory, y'all. But let's keep going, man, because this spiritual warfare I have in my notes, you know. <clears throat> oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And we talked about it, how it seems like it's always the person, man. You know? I have in my notes, <clears throat> trying to deal with this spiritual warfare within the mind we talked about, y'all. The battle, the spiritual battle, the spiritual mind battle that we have in our own mind. And we talked about that, how, you know, it's different. Because the flesh and blood that's intertwined in the warfare 
intertwined in the net is not another person, but is you. <laughs> That's the mind battles we got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And we trying to deal with this warfare without cutting ourselves, yo. You know what I'm saying? Battles of the mind, and that's where Satan fight the greatest. A lot of times, your fight is going to be within your own mind, and we're going to get into it within your own self. The Bible says Satan shoot fiery darks, y'all. Fiery darks in our mind. Sending us thoughts, sending us ideas, sending us dreams, sending us all kind of things that's not even us. <laughs> not even from us. But from hell itself, yo. Can you understand and discern the difference? That's why the scripture tells us in sucking crim sucking um um sucking um Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, he said, cast down every thought, imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And that scripture go deep, man, but it's too deep for me to go into because we got to keep moving, y'all. But he said, cast it down. Cast it down. That's not your thoughts. The Bible said that the thoughts of the righteous are perfect. <laughs> That's not your thoughts. That's not what you want to do. Paul says a daily battle that goes on between me. He said, the things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. But the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Oh, God, what is that? Spiritual warfare going on in Paul's mind. Going on in Paul's body. But Paul said, I had to learn some things. I had to settle down and begin to cast these things down. Cast these things down. Submitting to the word of God and not to my flesh. Putting my flesh on the altar, yo. Where it got to be what? Paul said, I buffered my body daily. You got to go on a fast sometime. The Bible says some don't go out but by prayer and fasting. You got to kill that flesh sometimes. Because it's just like two dogs I heard that's fighting. They say, which one going to win? Whatever one that's the strongest. Whatever one that been eating the most, sometimes you got to starve your flesh and feed your spirit, man. And I was going over it as I'm studying this. It's so easy. God done gave us so many ways and mechanisms to feed our spirit. We don't even have to read the Bible no more. We can listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Men of God, you working out, but you got that word in your ear just playing. Oh, God, you don't have to understand it all. You're feeding your spirit. Paul said we live not, what, what the scripture said, we live not by bread alone, but what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You are feeding yourself. When you let that listen. I remember when I first came to Christ, I had to catch up. Ask my wife, I used to be reading this thing for hours. Staying up till 5, 6 in the morning, reading the Bible, feeding my spirit, y'all. Falling in love with this Bible. Changed my life forever. And I'm able to lead my children. I'm able to allow them to see me in that Bible. My son came home the day playing games. I'm in the word. He like, man, what you doing? Man, you just chilling? Huh, B? I said, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> he look at me like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I want to leave a legacy, y'all. Not just of wealth and of money, of material things. And we will be blessed as a people. You're going to own some things that you never owned before. Ooh, you're going to be a lender and not a borrower. You're going to be the head and not the tail. I promise you, man. And it's not my promise. He already spoke it. He already spoke it. Tedrick, the direction you going, me and you done talked about it, my brother. Keep moving straight, man. Keep moving straight. Ain't too many of your age operating like that. You're going to be able to go back and get a lot of them. 
Ooh, and your words might not be able to get them, but your life going to testify to them. Oh, God, they ain't going to be able to deny the way the Lord didn't move upon your life, my brother. And it's going to be a testimony to all of them because they know where you was and now they see where you at. <laughs> ain't nobody could do it like the most high, Tedric. He's an awesome God, man. He's an awesome God, yo. But we let him fight our battles. We cast down every imagination. And just to keep going, I have in my notes trying to deal with this spiritual warfare on the job. <laughs> it could be trouble on the job, man. Come on now. Huh? Dealing with this spiritual warfare on the job, yo. I have in my notes trying to deal with this spiritual warfare in public spaces. Just being out in the public, you got to be watching, man. You got to be armored up. <laughs> and we're going to get into the armor of the Lord. We got to be armored up. I have in my notes trying to deal with this spiritual warfare even in church. Oh, God, even in church. And this is the last place we supposed to deal with spiritual warfare. But as I'm studying it, I said that quote is the last place it's supposed to be. But God quickly spoke to me, nah, it's one of the greatest places it's going to be. <laughs> Why? Why? Because Satan don't like what we doing. Especially if God is in the place. I ain't talking about where they playing church. I'm talking about now where they trying to live this thing for real. Who where God is moving and opening doors, where God is saving folks, where people are not just, just, just looking for the hand of God, but seeking the face of God. Who Satan don't like that. That's where the greatest warfare is, in the church. So we got to stay on it up, man. We got to stay on it up, even in the church. I have in my notes, but God is, is brilliant, yo. He had provided for us spiritual weapons to deal with our spiritual warfare. And one of those spiritual weapons I have in my notes, y'all, is called prayer. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, for our, weapons are, or for our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. I love how the scriptures say, in God. <laughs> because a lot of time we think that it's that 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 we could just get it from God and then go fight. No, it's in God. It's in Christ. It's in Christos. <laughs> it's in Him. He said, "If you abide in Me and My Word abide in you, it's in Him. You can't find it outside of Him." It's not something you could just get and just go. I remember watching The Shack. I don't know if y'all ever watched The Shack, the movie The Shack. It's an awesome movie, man. You know what I'm saying? The picked in the Godhead and everything, you know. And I, I know they got a woman playing as God, but overlook that and get the real spiritual concept that this movie is giving. You know what I'm saying? Because you could eat the meat and spit out the bones. Oh, God, that's for the mature Christian. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're a baby, you're going to need somebody to help you with that, to be able to see those things. But look at the real picture of what God trying to give you, where you could eat the meat and spit out the bones and not choke. But this movie is awesome because I was telling my wife, we watching it, and um, they got a Hispanic brother playing as Jesus, as the carpenter. And um, Mac, you know what I'm saying, who played in the movie, they running on the water together, man. Like, you know, they walking on water like Jesus. But after Mac came out of a situation, out of a test, he was so happy, you know what I'm saying, getting revelation about his daughter and everything. He just broke out running and tried to walk on the water himself. And then, look, when he hit the water, he like, hold up, I'm getting wet. What's going on? The carpenter in the movie, Jesus looked at him and said, it worked better with me. <laughs> he said work better with me it's in me that's what he was telling him you can't walk on the water by yourself 
You can't walk on the water by yourself, Miss Hannah. It's him. It's in him. I got to be in him. I got to abide in him. I can't just be with him on one day of the week and I'm not with him on the rest of the days. I can't just be with him on Sunday and I'm not with him on Monday. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. We got to put both of our feet in. Who? God. And allow him to do what he do. And you're going to have access to everything that's in him. And it's going to work so beautiful in your life. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to diminish the test that come to you. It's not going to diminish the temptation. But it's going to make it light. Because you're not carrying the burden. <laughs> Somebody else is carrying it for you. And that's what he was made to do. That's what he was made to do. He's the burden barrier. He carries it. He came to carry it. Now I want to tell you about the way I look at this spiritual weapon of prayer. And we're going to probably close after this love where we at. We're going to close after this because I want to give you some revelation, man. I want you to see this thing the way I see it and the way I look at it and how it blessed my life and how I deal with this spiritual weapon called prayer. Because you got to understand, we done, we done brought you through the script. We done showed you how valuable it is. But now you got to know how to use it. <laughs> you got to know how to use it. He got work for you. You a soldier in the army of the Lord, man. You know? But I look at, y'all, this spiritual weapon of prayer. <clears throat> I don't look at it like a sword, y'all. You see, I know the, the armor of God, and we're going to get into it in chapter, uh, verse 13, but we're in verse 12 right now. You see, I don't look at prayer as a sword. You see, the Bible say that, that the word of God is a sword. Jesus cut up the devil, Mr. Franklin, with the word of God. He sliced him up. It was a sword. But I don't look at prayer as a sword, y'all. But I look at it as a firearm. <laughs> I look at it as a firearm. Let me bring it to you. I look at it as a gun. I look at it as a pistol. I look at it as a rifle, yo. I look at it as a firearm. And to give you an intelligent definition <laughs> I have in my notes, a firearm is any type of gun that uses <clears throat> an explosive charge and is designed to be readily carried and used by an individual. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The definition say now the legal terms is defined in further in different countries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, but God got his own legal terms, you know what I'm saying, for this firearm that we're talking about. <clears throat> you know? And it can be carried on you. Mm. Because he wanted to be carried on you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And how I look at it, y'all, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual weapon. It's a, it's a firearm. And the thing about it is it can hit the target, hit the enemy, and deal with the enemy from a distance. Meaning you could use it as a rifle, a sniper rifle. You could hit the, the enemy from a distance, y'all. But you could also take this spiritual weapon of prayer and hit the enemy in close range. Oh, God. You could pull it from the hip and hit him close range with it. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But you could also use it for my older saints like a Tommy gun. <laughs> you could use this spiritual weapon of prayer like a Tommy gun. You could use it as a what? Tech nine for the youngsters. You could use it, Mr. Franklin. You was in the army. As a machine gun. Oh, God. Tan the enemy camper. Leaving limbs. 
And I want to show you something, man. I hope the Lord give me some time, Lord. I have in my notes, man, it's also, y'all, this spiritual weapon, I see it as an offensive weapon. You say I have in my notes, well, well, why, why, why is not a, 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 um, a defensive weapon? Well, I see it as an offensive weapon, y'all, because whoo, we got to be proactive whoo, with this weapon. This weapon is not for the reactive. Mm. See, a lot of times we want to react to problems. When God say, I need you to be proactive, I need you to deal with the problem months in ahead, years in ahead, days in ahead. Why? How you do that? Shooting with that spiritual weapon of prayer. You're dealing with problems, Tedrick, that's, that the devil got set for you months in advance. You hitting them from a distance. <laughs> they don't even make it to your residence, my brother. They don't even make it. Because you operating from a proactive standpoint. You dealing with this weapon as an offensive weapon. How they say it in the hood, you getting off first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You stealing him. You know what I'm saying? You sneaking him. You know what I'm saying? And we need Christians in this day that we living in who going to raise up and sneak the devil, man. Stop letting the devil sneak you. Come on, this is an offensive weapon that God then gave you. You could hit him from a distance. And I have in my notes, it's an offensive weapon because sometimes our best defense is our best offense. Sometimes, Christian, your best defense is going to be your best offense. So I'm trying to give you one of your best offense. Yeah, your husband planning on coming fussing, but you, 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 you ready for it. Let me get my, you know what I'm saying? Not in the natural, no, in the spiritual. Why? Not because you hate him, because you love him. Because you love him. I'm going to deal with this warfare that the devil trying to entangle him in and bring it to my house. I'm going to deal with it from a distance. Same is true for the woman of God. Same is true for family. Same is true when you're on that job. Same is true. You know how the devil come in a lot of time. It's called familiar spirits. He been coming at you. You know what I'm saying? He always come the same way. <laughs> he not very bright, I heard from some pastors. You know what I'm saying? He come the same way. So you got to deal with him accordingly. And that's what's going on with our brothers, man, in the hood and sisters. It's spiritual warfare. It's spiritual warfare, Tab, but they're dealing with it with natural means. You fall out with your brother. You fall out with your sister. You got gang war. They shooting one another in the natural. Trying to do what? Trying to deal with their enemies. Trying to deal with the spiritual warfare. Now they kill their brother. Now their brother died, but what happened? Because you fought in the natural, the warfare popped right back up. Now you got enemy with his brother and with his cousin. So you're steady shooting in the natural and you ain't doing nothing but killing your, your problem for only a monetary moment. I liken it to like this. I remember when I, you know what I'm saying, we got the house back in Lafayette. Um, I was, I was, I had like a, like a tree of grass, man. It was like my wife went to plant some flowers there, but... And I would cut it low, y'all. I would cut it all the way low. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know it was some stumps. <laughs> so I cut it low, and I'm like, everything look good. We got the chairs out there. We got the lights out there. You know what I'm saying? We, we chilling. Everything look good. But as I go on with day to life, I look outside that thing that raise up again, Miss Terrell. I'm like, oh, God. I cut it again. It do the same thing. But I'm like, I'm not thinking. Bryce, you got to deal with it at the root. You got to deal with it at the root. And a lot of times we fighting in the natural with carnal weapons, and we not dealing with the problem at the root. <laughs> we only cutting it at the top surface. And what it do? It'll pop right back up. It pop right back up. You know what I'm saying? But with this spiritual weapon, 
You deal with your problem at the root. You deal with it at the root. Why? Because that's what it says in Romans chapter 1 verse 20. The Bible says, from creation of the world, the invisible things of him are clearly seen, being understood through the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead. So that they are without excuse, yo. And all this scripture is saying is that the invisible things are clearly seen by the visible things that we see. And what is letting us know is that everything starts in the spiritual. You see, before you are fleshly being, um, being Matthew, you are spiritual being. You got a spirit living on the inside. That's eternal. <laughs> Before anything rise up that's natural, y'all, it first happened in the spiritual. So any problem that we facing and going through, it first started in the invisible. Mm. So how about if I stop dealing with my problem in the natural, but I begin to deal with them in the spiritual? How about it if I stop trying to deal with the, the problem that I see and I deal with the problem that I don't see? Oh, God. Because I know it's something spiritual that's causing it. Let me begin to check my own life. God, am I right with you? God, what you trying to tell me, God? Am I out of line? Do I need to repent? Um, what David said, David said, I'll let me quickly repent. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Do I need to repent, God? Is this something from you or is it from the enemy, God? Do I need to begin to cast him down, God? Do I, begin, do I need to begin the warfare prayer in my closet? Oh, God, in my house. And we're going to get into that. All these different elements of prayer. What do I need to do, Lord? Because God's going to give you the game. He's going to show it to you. Oh, God, and you're going to be able to deal with it accordingly. You're going to be able to deal with the spiritual devil that's behind it. <laughs> Whether it be idolatry. That's what Paul said. Paul said an idol is nothing. And we know an idol could be anything. An idol could be money in the days that we're living in. It could be shopping for the women. It could be clothes. It could be so much things that we put before God. Amen. And we don't understand that an idol has a demon behind it. Ooh, that's what Paul say. That's what Paul say. But how about if you stop trying to save your money and thinking that it's all about, now nah, I don't want to spend, let me not. No, how about it if you begin to pray? Nah, Lord, help me, Lord. Oh, God. Lord, come against this spirit of spending when I don't need to spend, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. What if I begin to hit him with spiritual warfare? Devil, loose my people. Ain't no, because the devil will attack your finances, man. You got to know that. I'm learning that. God bringing me to another level, so he's showing me that the devil, when he can't get you, he'll try to get your finances to slow you down, to slow you down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me deal with, with yeah, I know my, my children, come, I know they're coming at me like that, but that's not them. No, let me deal with this, this devil in prayer right quick. Let me put, let me put that prayer on it. Let me, begin, let me begin to deal with him. Not only that, I'm going to begin to deal with all kind of other things. Devil, so now you done tick me off. Now, now I'm hitting everything now. You know what I'm saying? You know what he going to do? Let me back up. Let me back up, man. I was working on something right there in his life. Now he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't start praying. Now the Lord didn't move in that area. Now I got to start all over again because he's a relentless attacker, yo. He relentless. He's a spiritual being. We are fighting a real devil, man, who don't quit. He's relentless. The Bible says in Daniel, that's his idea, that's his strategy to wear out the saints. He keep coming at us. He keep coming at us like a water hitting a bridge, hitting a rock or something. He don't stop. You could knock him down, deal with him, but he keep coming back. So that's why we got to keep hitting him. <laughs> we got to keep fighting. It's a fight. Ooh, Paul says a what? 
It's a good fight. A good fight of fate. A good fight of fate. And that's how we want our story to end. Paul said, I fought the good fight of fate. He said, I what? I have kept the faith. I have been faithful fighting. We're going to get in touch and we're going to stop right there. I can't go no further on love. Well, I'm at with the time. We're going to stop, you know, and we're going to get into this, this, this going deeper into it. And um, I still never got a chance. We're going to get into this book, y'all. And, you know, and um, I'm going to give you some historical facts about it and everything. We're going to get into the ascension of Isaiah, you know, that breaks down the martyrdom of Isaiah. And it's an extra biblical book, you know what I'm saying? And Pastor broke it out, man, a while back, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of theologians that study the Bible, a lot of scholars, they try to keep us from these extra biblical books like Jasher and, and um, the Apocrypha. You know what I'm saying? And this book is kind of sort of part of the Apocrypha. It was, it was, it was, um, it was put together by Ethiopians. They, you know what I'm saying? That's the text we're going it, it was it was found as a whole text. You know what I'm saying? With 11 chapters by the Ethiopians, who some say was the first Christians <laughs> outside of Jerusalem, y'all. And we're gonna just kind of touch on that for his glory. Just to kind of give you a little um information of understanding that this book is real, you know? You know, we're going to look at some scriptures on where the devil dwells and where he operate and where he, he, he resided because he walk about like a roaring lion seeking whom he made the vow. Not only just him, but we're going to get into our scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 verse, verse 12, how he deals with an organized an organized ranking of foes that he had, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, yo. He got a very organized team in this territory. That's why Jesus says Satan don't cast out Satan. He said, how can a house stand? <laughs> If it's divided. But we got to be unified. But we got to understand these spiritual weapons that we have. So, man, we're going to open up the altar, y'all. We never like to leave without giving that gospel. Man. Because God, y'all, for us to operate in these spiritual weapons and be in God, we got to first make peace with God. You see, we all done fell short of the glory of God. We all are at enmity with God before we submit to Christ, y'all. We none perfect. We all done done wrong. But God said in the Old Testament, he would tell it to the Israelites all the time. He would say, only acknowledge. Acknowledge your faults. Acknowledge that you done sinned. Acknowledge that you done made a mistake and transgressed my law. And he said, all you got to do is acknowledge. He said, he said, all you got to do in the New Testament is confess. We like to say it like this back in the home church. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said, admit, y'all. A, it's as, it's, it's as easy as A, B, and C. Number one, we admit to God. We be big boys and big girls and we admit it. We say, God, we saw it. We sinned against you. We done, we done made a fault against you. We're not perfect, Lord. And then he said, not only admit your wrongs, but he said, he said, what he said? He said, B, he said, believe. Believe. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of my dear son, Jesus Christ, who I sent to die on the cross for all your sins. I know you think it's cliche, but it's true. You see, God just can't forgive your sins. Now, nah, your sins got to be placed on another. God is not a man that he should lie. He said a soul that sin must die. It's not that it might die, it must die. So Christ died in our place, yo. God ain't just letting people go free. No, 
somebody got to die. And Christ took that place for you. It's like a person being in the court and he committed murder and he guilty. But Christ walked in the court courtroom and said, Your Honor, I'm going to take his charge. I'm going to do his time. Whether, whether the judge have a legal right, he can let you go. Why? Because somebody else is going to pay your penalty. It's like a person paying your fine in the courtroom. He have the legal right to let you go. Well, Jesus took our place, yo. And God has the legal right to let us go. And then he tell us, only confess after that. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Confess that he didn't save you. Confess that you believe all that they said about him, yo. He's not a liar. So with that being said, man, if you heard the Lord, we're going to wrap it up. You could come up and pray, man. We're going to pray together. And we're going to close it out. We got that minstrel just, just, just flowing so sweet. So, man, if you want to pray, come up and pray, man. You know what I'm saying? If you, you need a Savior, not just needing a Savior, but if you need prayer in an area, come up and pray. The altar is open. The altar is open. He said, if you hear the Lord, heart not in your heart like in the day of a vocation. He said, come and make things right with your God. Come and speak with your God. Come and talk to your God. Because it's not a man up here. It's not a man that you need to talk to. It's the most high God. For we nothing but dirt, nothing but dust. But God did it all. He did it all, yo. And he loved you. He loved you with an everlasting love. He been loving you before you was even born. The Bible said he called you by name in your mother's womb. He knew you and ordained you for some things. He got a purpose and a plan for you that's greater than any plan you can, can write up. And he want to move in your life. He want to save you, but not only save you, he gave us a promise. He said, I will save your whole family. Your whole family. So repeat after me, y'all. Say, Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for doing all that you did for me. For sending your son to die on the cross for my sins, for my faults, for my wrongs. And Lord, I believe everything about your son. And you said all that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So save me, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Make me new and use me to operate with your spiritual weapons to bless my life and those around me. Father, use me for your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Love y'all. Love y'all, man. Y'all be blessed in the name of Jesus. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Y'all be blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you cause your face to shine upon them. Bless them, God. Lift up your countenance upon them. Bless them with peace, with shalom peace. Be with them as they travel, God. Let it be you that take the will. Cover them in every way, God, and bless them most high. For the Lord, for you are a rewarder of those that diligently bless, um, seek you, God. And they didn't came and seek you. Then drove 30 minutes, 40 minutes, God. Some even further. But I'm asking you to reward them tonight, God. Who, God, reward them, Father. Pour them out a blessing, Daddy. For your glory, do it in Jesus' name. 
Y'all be blessed. Y'all be blessed. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all, man. Can't wait to see y'all Monday. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. God got work. God got work for us, saints. Y'all be blessed.